Hello, this is Doug Walker, also known as that guy with the glasses, nostalgia critic, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I'm going to do a commentary for this Casper chase and what it is, what it pretty much says here, says that it is the uh, complete chase, well the, the shortened chase first what was shown on the website and then the complete one after. And the reason I'm doing that is because I sort of want to show people, especially people looking to get into this or into editing, directing, anything like that, uh, just what a difference there is between the one take and what a difference there is between the uh, edited take. And you'll notice that Ghostbusters, the song, is taken out, uh, we removed all copyrighted uh, music and stuff, so you're gonna hear a lot of Mozart's Requiem, because <laughs> it's one of the few classical pieces that sort of really rocks. I really love it. it. It's a great action bit of music. A lot of other people use it too, and of course it's not copyrighted, so you can use that. And yes, my neighbors do think I'm crazy for constantly running down the street and holding guns and proton packs and what have you. Now that actually got uh, recorded over is actually a different line of dialogue. I think it's a... What do I... Oh, no, no, no! Actually, that one I accidentally left. I forgot to change it on this take. <laughs> so, yeah, I say GMX Expo, is that, which actually makes no sense. It should be Geek Media Expo. When I say GMX Expo, I'm saying Geek Media Expo Expo, which makes no sense. But you want to know, were these people in on this? Were they just making it up with me? And it was half and half. This is actually a... Uh, oh, what they call it? They call it a panel. And it's where I go, I, I talk about, I answer questions, uh, tell some jokes and stuff like that. It just sort of mingle with the fans. I told them I had an hour, and I said halfway through, about a half hour in, would you guys mind if I shot a video? Do you guys want to be a Nostalgia Craig video? Of course, they all, you know, jumped at the chance and said, yes, yes, we do. So I said, okay, I'm going to come back here and I I'm going to film something, but I'm not going to tell you what. Improvising is totally allowed. In fact, it's preferred. And that's all I told them. So, why well, I came in with the Ghostbuster suit saying, Where is he? Where's Casper? Where's Casper? You know, the rest, they pretty much have no idea what's going on. They, they're just going along with it as, you know, as much as they can. And they just really, really jumped into it. And uh, the music, I should say, that was originally used, by the way, was uh, Carter Burwell from uh, the Hot Sucker Proxy. I forgot to credit that. And someone else I forgot to credit, too, uh, before I get all wet in this scene, is uh, I forgot to credit Bargo. He did the effects for the uh, the Proton Pack, and they look fantastic. They look so... It, it looks like something right out of the movie. Actually, it looks better than the movie, in my opinion, so I thought that really came out well. This kid's about to push me in, actually... Again, I knew I was going to end with Hug Me, I had no idea what was going to happen, he just pushes me in. <laughs> I was actually a really smart kid, I remember that kid, he was like, he acted like a 30 year old, he didn't act like his age. <laughs> but he was very, very smart, he was uh, really cool to talk to. Alright, and this is the uncut, oh wait, my, my stupid little line there. Okay, this is the uncut, you can see I'm waiting for the signal from my brother, my brother's filming all of this by the way. Uh, did a very, very good job. And uh, the exposure is a little weird because we had on automatic exposure, so it gets a little, little goofy that way. And um, I'm trying to think, actually, it's cool sort of watching this too because it reminds me of this is my very first convention, and I knew I couldn't just do regular or just show up and answer questions. I figured I'm taking my time out to come here. Half of them aren't really even paying me, though they're, they're accommodating for the room and flying and everything, that's, you know, of course, unbelievably nice. But, um, but yeah, a lot of the stuff I figure, well, I'm still losing work time, I could be working, so I figure, well, I'll just bring the work with you, you know, and, and interact with people, you know, they just love it. None of these people outside here were actually aware that I was going to do this. And it's something, a real missed opportunity... The woman from Clerks, the girlfriend, uh, Dante's girlfriend, was there. And we had a nice long talk with her, and she was really cool and everything, but it was after this. I should have incorporated her in. I should have I should have gotten her in this. I feel really bad that I did. That would have been a great opportunity. This guy was super nice. He actually ju just uh, contributed in the charity drive we just did. It did a whole bunch of money, and, and even took us out to dinner and everything. Just, just a real nice fan. And here you can see, I cut this out, because you see me, I got a big laugh, I'm there, I'm, I'm watching myself, just like, you know, mesmerized by it and stuff, but it looked much funnier if you thought I just came in in the middle of all this. And even here. 
Even there, I make a reference that, you know, I'm going to put him in. I give them little clues. But in the actual video, you wouldn't have that in because it looks much more funny if they just... They have to guess along with you, you know? They have to come up with ideas that at the same time you're trying to come up with ideas. This woman playing Harley got really into character. <laughs> like, just the, like at the convention, she was asking questions as Harley and so as I mean, she did not step out of character. I mean, that guy was really nice, too. The guy I just zapped the, you know, I zapped Casper out of. So, is this technically lying, you know, saying that, oh, these people just showed up or I went to the convention? I don't think it is. Oh, and there's a joke, again, I, I had to reshoot that because you could see the video in, in the back with that guy with the glasses logo on there, so I, I had to redo it. Oh, we did know that once we saw this guy, I said, well, I, I had to recognize you, I had to acknowledge you, because that's... <laughs> I think that's the first time I saw somebody dress up like me, so I had to absolutely go for that. And again, somebody says, he's in that guy's coat! Well, you can't say no, so yeah, he's in there now. And something else you'll realize is that a lot of this, I mean, this stuff, I don't know if this is like 10, 20 minutes, something like that, and it's cut down to maybe three or four. I mean, there's so much of just squeezing out all the stuff that doesn't matter. And that's why you had to get really good and you had to train your eye. I mean, like, this, this is a great shot. That looks great, but it's only for half a second. We'll put that half a second in, you know, and, and just keep it flowing. I mean, you see, it's not quite as... Rambunction, I'm even walking at some point and stuff like that, but when you edit it together, you keep the flow going, you keep the panic. As you can see, over time, it wasn't just the people in the room, we got quite a, a little crowd coming in. And I did tell my brother, I said, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do, it's going to be improvised, but then when I saw the pool, I said, you know, I think I'm going to jump in that pool at the end. He pretty much just shrugs and says, whatever, I'll film it. <laughs> so... I do feel bad I couldn't jump that, but with the proton pack on that thing that, that my father actually made that proton pack. Well, the, the balloon part he didn't make, that was part of the costume, but the actual zapper looked horrible. I mean, it was like one piece of flat cardboard a kindergartner could make it. So my father came up with this thing that was, he came with a little cord that comes out and the little blaster at the end, it looks really great. See, Rob was so good at, at knowing where to, where to point the camera. There we go. And here you can even see that with the, um... I actually had a shot before. I had a shot of, uh, of Casper drowning, of him melting, going, I'm melting, I'm melting! And it was okay, but it distracted too much from the people. It had to be about the people interacting. So, I, if, if I could put Casper talking to me, I was thinking maybe I would, but I knew I would. I was gonna take it out, and it, that was the best thing to do, because again, it had to be about the convention, it had to be about the people. And again, you see, I actually fall in, I think, two or three times, I think, and but you keep them out because, you know, the, the bit is over once I go in again, once I get pushed in, you know. And you know, that was a good laugh for the people and everything, it's still, it's not the same as, you know, just ending on, you know, the stronger note. This Joker guy was really... That actually, both him and, uh... Harley there. I think they actually were a couple, so that worked out pretty good. And again, they, they were obviously trying to stay in character all the time. <laughs> Not sure what that thing I think he says from Doctor Who or something like that. I never did watch that show, but... I, I was trying to push the mouth-to-mouth the -mouth resuscitation bit, but uh, that never did go anywhere. I, I didn't think it really was going to go anywhere. I just wanted to see what they would do, but... At some point, yeah, you have to obviously acknowledge that it's over. And, yeah, you can see that that big applause and, and the laughing and stuff didn't really come until after I said, you know, it's over. You know, thank you, everybody. But that's part of, again, it's like there were people applauding when I jumped in the pool and there were people cheering and stuff like that. So you cut to that because technically it's not lying. It's not that exact shot. But, but that really did happen. There really were people applauding. So I don't see it as lying personally, you know. I mean, and that's something that I think a lot of directors and editors have to keep in mind. I mean, if you're really trying to get something across that did happen or is happening, you know, it, it, do it in a way that's not actually going to 
Um, you know, that's really not going to be lying, but going to be emphasizing what really did happen. And then my brother, I don't know why, he just left the camera on. <laughs> he just left it going. And I guess there, there is some funny stuff that comes out of this, some rather disgusting stuff in my opinion as well, but, uh... You, know, you don't often see, uh... The Joker with glasses, do you? I just realized that. <laughs> that looks very odd. I have no idea what that meant. <laughs> I don't know if Rob knew either. And boy, that bum looks a little too good. Every time I look over, I think that's actually me for a second. <laughs> so. And one of the weird things, it, it was strange. This was a very weird setup because the hotel, because this convention was done at the hotel, and there's a pool in the actual center was surrounded by the room, so I sort of realized anyone can look over and see where my room was. <laughs> you know, if, if I had like a deranged fan or something like that, which luckily I I didn't, or maybe I did, but they weren't, uh, but they were cowards, so it worked out okay. <laughs> again, he's just fell. I have no idea why he's fell. I think, again, we always hope there's going to be something. You just keep the camera on as long as you can. Oh, and actually there is. That's right, that these people, I, I tell them, you know, eh, don't ask, and, and so on and so forth. Too late. He's still staying in character. That's 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 a smart cameraman. <laughs> oh, and they even saw the whole thing. That's right. I guess how couldn't you? I remember saying later, I was like, you know, so what's uh, uh like a lot of the people because I was actually interrupting someone else's um, well, someone else's panel. I felt really bad, but uh. But they, but even he, the guy who was making the speech, was saying, yeah, I sort of wanted to know what's going on over there. I didn't want to keep talking. I wanted to join you guys, so. You might notice me sort of uh, snapping my neck a little bit. I have, like, the world's tightest neck. As far as I know, no one's ever, like, said it's a condition or that. I went to, you know, doctors and chiropractors and stuff. No one's been able to say exactly what it is, but I do have to... It's like I got snapped my neck more than the other, the average person, I think. Oh, I guess that was people waving at me, so. So if you ever see me sort of, you know, lean my head to the left or right or something like that, that's what that is. Oh, and my phone was destroyed! That's right, I think I, I bring that up, that I actually destroyed my phone. I got everything out of my pocket, but I needed the phone when we went to the, the panel so I could remember what time it was. And once I went in and I, yeah, I was walking up there, I put my hand on my, uh, in my pocket, I was just like, oh crud, that's my phone. So it was completely destroyed. But the wonderful, fantastic people at Channel Awesome bought me another one because they kick ass. Aren't they wonderful? Okay, this is us just being asses. This is... This is what we do. We just won't sh- Oh, God, isn't that lovely? <laughs> this is- Oh, shit. Okay. Don't blame me, guys. Rob's the one filming this, okay? <laughs> oh, what, you know, I just- Someone's jerking off to this right now. Maybe even with the commentary on. That's, like, horrifying, but I'm sure there is somebody. Hopefully it's female, but it's probably male. Actually, I am pretty hot. Look at those hairy, hairy nipples. And that suit is very, very... Once it's wet, it's very hard to get off, so... So I, I think I did get stuck at one point. I just can't stop looking at my wet nipples. <laughs> I feel so bad. You people have seen my nipples so much recently. You saw it in Spoonie with Spoonie, and now you're seeing it here. It, it's not fair, and I apologize. So I'm, like, quitting videos, so... I'm sorry. I, I guess I just really love showing off my nipples. I can't help it. Improvising as words, people. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something respectable I can say. I can't, though. I'm done. <laughs>